there'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death. This morning it is good to be in the presence of Jesus and also knowing and having confidence that we've got a Jesus uh, that cares. We are here for a moment where we would prepare to get into our knees or to pray for each other. But before we go into that, I would love us somehow to get into the word of the Lord for this morning. This morning and the evening, we will be in the Old Testament. Um, I want to make a disclaimer. I'm a New Testament student, but the New Testament and the Old Testament is one Bible, but I'll still be in the Old Testament still. We would look into the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 this morning. 2 Kings chapter 6. If you're in 2 Kings chapter 6, you'll say Amen. 2 Kings chapter 6, we are reading from verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered and said, Go. Then one, one said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered and said, I will go. So he went with them. When they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? He showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it there and made the iron to float. Therefore he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and he took it. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we asking that you help us to explain your word. In Jesus we pray, amen. The sons of the prophets in this narrative, they, they come... To Elisha. The, the Bible says as they come to Elisha, they say, Master, see that the place that we are in has become too small. Let us go and build ourselves a bigger place. The Bible says the answer by Elisha says, go. But one consented and said, Master, please, we cannot go without you. Many Bible students, when they, they get into this part of the narrative, they leave this part and they rush to the problem where the iron axe head fell into the water. But the miracle of this narrative begins before they go. He says, they, they say to him, we cannot go unless you go with us. And Elisha here is a representative of God. Now this teaches us a lesson that whenever we start anything in life, we should never be confident to start it without God being there. The Bible says as they went into Jordan, as they were cutting out uh, the trees, one had a borrowed iron axe head that fell into the water. I want to say and pause to you this morning and say, be careful how you handle things that are borrowed. Your life is borrowed. The time to study in this place is a borrowed time. Your position is a borrowed position. Be careful how you use things that do not belong to you, that have been borrowed to you. The Bible says this man, as he cut the iron, the iron fell into the water. And he cries, alas, my master, for it was borrowed. I love how Elisha addresses this man. He, he, he does not say, where, where, why did it fall? He simply asks him an interesting question. He says to him, show me where it fell. At times when we come into the presence of the Lord with problems, difficulties, and circumstances that are above 
our, uh, our ability to handle, instead of telling God exactly what is the problem, we are not able to show God exactly where the problem is. Elisha asked this man, he says to him, show me where it fell, the exact spot where it fell. The Bible says the man showed Elijah where it, Elisha where it fell. I want to ask you a question. What is it that troubles you? If you identify where the problem is, show God exactly where the problem is so that he can be able to help you. The Bible says they pointed a spot where the iron axe head, 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 fell, head fell and Elisha takes a wood and he places it in the spot where the iron axe head had, had fallen and the Bible says and the iron axe head floated above the water. And Elisha says to this man, pick it up for yourself. Elisha does not assist the man to pick the iron axe head. As it floats, he says to him, take it for yourself. And the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White writes, he says, prayer is not substitute for duty. I, I, I have, I've seen students, I have been one and I'm still one myself, who, who love the Lord and who love praying. Uh, who would be lazy and say, hey, I will pray. They will pray and not study. And they will pray in the name of Jesus. And, and I tell you, even when they have prayed in the name of Jesus, they still fail in the name of Jesus. Because prayer is not substitute for duty. Humanity or divinity does not do what humanity can do. You, you, can, you can pray all you like. You can even pray in different languages, but if you do not do what you are supposed to do, you will still fail. The Bible says the lesson that we learn here is that when he had seen the iron axe head floating above the water, the man of God says to him, take it for yourself, and he takes it. Now, if you read the book Patriarchs and Prophets, she says when she writes, the, the wood that was thrown by Elijah represents prayer. That whenever we apply prayer to our conditions, the problem may not immediately go away, but God will allow us to float above our circumstances. Our circumstances, as hard as they are, God will allow us to float above the circumstances. And prayer, Ellen White says when she writes, prayer is the breath of the soul. If prayer is the breath of the soul, we all know as we are sitting here that we do not pray or we do not breathe to get, but we breathe to become. So people have come to prayer, they have used prayer as a manipulative tool where they can pray to God and ask for things. But prayer, if it is the breath of the soul, we pray to become. Prayer is not something we do because we want to pass time. It's supposed to be our lifestyle. I think during the week, when I began, I told you that when I arrived in Solusi, I had thought that uh, theology, there is no maths, there is no accounting, isn't it? Do you remember I told you that? I, I was never good in high school with maths uh, and with, uh, with, uh, with accounting. And of course, one reason being... Uh, that in, in South Africa, generally, we are not good with, with meds. Uh, and I arrived in Solusi, and they told me that first year, meds, hey, first year, accounting, my head started spinning. And I went straight to the dean, saying, Mr. Dean, sir, I did not come for meds. I came to read verses and to become a pastor. And I was told the answer in the name of Jesus, pastor, even in the Bible, there is a book of numbers. God is interested also in numbers. And I was in trouble. I was in trouble. Remember, I told you that I wrote the first test and I got a very strange grade. But I failed in the name of Jesus. That's the short of it. And, and, and later on, as I was praying and studying, I discovered that as you pray over your circumstance and work, God is able even to change your attitude of the mind and give you the right grade that you are looking for. For an example, I remember at the end of that semester, we were taught met by a guy who is from Madagascar. You know, Madagascans don't speak English very well. They speak Frenchlish. 
their English sounds like French, and I did not understand maths, and this man spoke, it was tough. When I finished that exam at the end of, 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 of the term, for some reason I did not leave early, he called me to his office and said, Pastor, I am calling you then. I knew that, hey, if he calls me, probably I have failed. But because I had prayed and I've done my part, I went there. Then he says, Pastor, I'm just calling you so that I put you at ease. Congratulations, you have passed and you have got yourself a B. Then he says to me, had you not had an attitude when you began, you would have gotten an A. The problem was not met, but the problem was with you. There are times where the problem is not so much about our circumstances, but the problem is that we have accepted the mentality of defeat. Let me talk to staff, people that have been put in the positions of responsibility. I, I am waiting and looking forward to a time where people would want to excel in the small corners that they are in. Excellence. We have a problem in Africa of people who just are satisfied with substandard things. When God has given us an ability to excel, one writer says, uh, when he writes about excellence, he says, if you are a street sweeper, you must do your best in sweeping the streets that even when angels in heaven have a meeting and they look down on earth, they see there comes a great sweeper because you are doing the best in wherever corner you are. It is only in Africa where you find people look down at certain, at certain jobs as if they are not important. More recently, I, I had a privilege, I was sharing with the pastor, of, of being elected as an executive committee member of the union, the, the, the SID, and the GC. For the first time since the creation of the world, I was in America uh, some time ago in October for the annual council. I was surprised when I looked at how Americans are. A normal American who is working in a normal shop does not look down at his work. Africans when they get small jobs that look small according to us, we think they are small and we look down at small beginnings when God has given us an ability to succeed. What you can do, divinity will not do. But what humanity should do, must do their best. Let me also conclude with a story. A true story. Like I told you, I grew up in Soweto. Uh, Soweto... Is, is one of the most beautiful places. When people hear about Soweto, they think it's a, another terrible place. Soweto is a beautiful place. But Soweto has people that have been affected by apartheid. I grew up in that environment as well. There was a man who arrived in South Africa from Sudan, and that man we called Technics or Tekla, that's his name. That man was selling because from home, uh, there is a hospital, I stay close to the biggest hospital, the second largest hospital in the world, that is in Soweto. So close to it, there are taxi rank and there are markets where people are selling. This guy from Sudan began by selling sweets. Are we together? Began by selling sweets. South Africans will say we will never do that, such small jobs. That guy began selling sweets outside a big supermarket. One time he got a job to clean the toilets, not far from the supermarket. The man got the job, cleaned the toilet, not far from the supermarket. Now he had two jobs. He began with selling sweets, now he's cleaning the toilets. Later today, as we speak, the shop that the man was sitting outside of the supermarket, he is now the owner of the supermarket. What am I saying? The problem is not with Tekla. The problem is that South Africans had a wrong mentality in their heads. It is when we come to such situations where you are promoted and the university promotes you and they say, now we are promoted, you are becoming a PA for certain person and people think that job is a lousy job, but wherever God places you to be, do the best and leave the result with Jesus. Let me talk to those who are young. Talk to those who are pastors. I'm a pastor. It's my sixth year in ministry. I got ordained last year. 
when I left Solusi, I decided from a word go that I will never be a mediocre pastor. If you become mediocrity, do you know what people will say? They will meet your professor there, the VC. They will tell him that, ah, you gave us the most useless pastor since creation of the world. Because if you decide to fail wherever you are, you do not only reflect yourself, but you reflect the school you are coming from. And there are guys, women, and men here who have dedicated their lives to teach you to do the best that they can. I tell you, even today, I am proud of my teachers, and I make sure that I don't embarrass them wherever I go. If you are lazy and you decide to be a mediocre person, at least if you think about the people that have taught you, refuse to be substandard in their name. At least their name and the name of your institution must do the rest for you to become the best in what you do. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. And I pray that as we pray in this week of prayer, the Lord will give you an experience with Jesus. I want to sing you a solo today, but I'm not a good singer. Don't listen to the voice, listen to the song. I think if you know the song, you will join me. Why worry when you can pray? Trust Jesus, he will lead the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, 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 when you can pray? Why worry, when you can pray? Trust Jesus, he will lead the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, 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 when you can pray? Dimini, uchitungu para. Dimini, uchitungu para. Usongo dima dima. Wa etsi sa Thomasi, kwe dama urabele udirabelele. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that one more time you have spoken to us in one most practical ways that prayer cannot substitute what we can do for ourselves. Lord, as we begin to do things, let us remember to always begin with you. We know that Christianity, a Christian is not successful at the point of finish, but a Christian and a child of God is successful even before he begins when Jesus is with them. We pray that, Lord, wherever we are, allow us to light our lights and make our light so shine so that people can see the good works of the Lord that he is doing through us and in us. I pray that, Lord, you bless all of us this morning Give us an experience with Jesus. In Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Our most gracious Father, what in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the message that we have received this morning. We thank you for giving us this message through your servant. And Lord, we pray that may this message be manifested in our lives, O oh Lord. We commit ourselves unto thee as an institution. And in a special way, Lord, we commit the students and the workers into thy care. That, Lord, may you continue with, to be with these members of this university, Lord. Be with the students as they study. Give them knowledge and wisdom from on high. So that, Lord, as they, as, as they are going to 
study and write the exams, be with them, O oh Lord. May you give them knowledge from on high so that, Lord, they may be able to be successful and may they give you glory and honor. We also pray for the workers, O oh Lord, that we give, you give us the right mind. You give us the right ability to be, serve you in a better way. We pray that may you use them, Lord, in a special way so that, Lord, as they walk on this campus, may they glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for the speaker and the chaplaincy department. We commit everyone into thy care. May you touch us, O Lord. May you protect us from harm and danger. May you continue to guide us and let this institution fulfill the mission that you have established. We pray this and many other blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.